Hello, everybody. This is a uh, Dr. Living Day. And uh, I am a professor uh, in the Industrial Systems Engineering at the University of Regina. First of all, uh, let me extend my very warm welcome to all of you, the students of the University of Regina. Also, uh, thanks to the, uh, uh, our student union for organizing such a great event, the uh, Welcome Week 2021. Okay, for uh, the Welcome Week 2021, I was asked to uh, give uh, some talk about my research. I think uh, the interesting topic that uh, involved in my research would be uh, nonlinear dynamics. Okay, let's uh, get started. And I would like to say uh, something about uh, linear and nonlinear systems, solution of uh, nonlinear systems, and the future of the nonlinear dynamics. Okay, hopefully that will be uh, interested by you. Uh, let me share my screen with you. Okay, so linear and the nonlinear systems. Linear systems are everywhere we have seen uh, in our physics, uh, mathematics, engineering, and everywhere in the world, actually. But why nonlinear? And what is the significance of nonlinear systems existing in our world? And how we solve the nonlinear systems? And what is the current research, state of research for nonlinear dynamics? Okay, uh, as I said, uh, my name is uh, Li Mingdei and a professor at, uh, in the industrial system and engineering. And this is my contact information. Uh, if you are interested in uh, this topic or anything relating to uh, the courses or research that I have, and please contact me. And you can also find my research, my teaching uh, at this website. Okay. Linear uh, systems, and as I said, the linear systems are around us everywhere. For example, let's say when, when we get to high school uh, study and the high school, we have learned uh, friction and the friction is just, uh, described by friction force equals to the uh, coefficient of friction multiplied by normal force, right? Everybody knows that. This is a typical linear relationship. And that linear relationship has been used for us for studying at the four applications as well. However, can we say this linear equation describe the fact of the friction completely? Maybe not. Let's say, I'll give you an example. You can do a test at home. Let's say you have a plate uh, and you put a piece of paper on it and then you uh, raise up one end of the plate and make an angle between your plate and the horizontal surface of your table, for example. And uh, then at a certain angle, your paper will slide down from the, from the uh, surface of the plate. Uh, that angle, we call it the friction angle, actually. And then if you fold the paper and make it a small piece and put it in this, the, the same plate, and then you may, you may find out your friction angle different. That implies that friction is not just based on the coefficient of friction and normal reaction, but also the contact area. And actually there are a lot of factors involved in the uh, friction force, such as deformation, such as uh, uh, the moisture uh, 
uh, such as the, the condition of, uh, uh, let's say, temperature, deformation of the materials, etc. There are a lot of things, and it can be complex and nonlinear. It's not that linear. So exactly what is nonlinear? Let's say we, we have another relationship that we know of from high school. And by saying that, let's say I have a spring. The spring force is determined by spring force equal to the coefficient of the uh, uh, spring constant or uh, spring stiffness, K, multiplied by the deformation from the end stretch position, right? That's what we have learned. However, that relationship is also linear. And uh, it, it actually, in reality, especially when the deformation become larger, then this formula may probably be more accurate. Uh, in comparing with this linear relationship, this one is nonlinear because we have x to the power three there and you can have x to the power of five, et cetera. Okay, that's the nonlinear uh, relationship, which is more close to reality. So, well, there are a lot of uh, linear relationships uh, among us, uh, uh, among the uh, scientific and the engineering uh, areas, and the, such as the thermal expansion and the equation of motion, et cetera. And, the fact is that actually our world is nonlinear. Nonlinear relationship as shown by this equation would be more close to reality or to the nature. Okay, so let's say what kind of a relationship that we may have between linear system and a nonlinear system. Okay. Say this is a pendulum, we call it the simple pendulum because we are saying that we have a rope here with the length L and we consider that mass is concentrated at this point. So we can consider this point, uh, a, a, the mass of this point M. And for this situation, we consider this, this object as a, a particle, okay. So that's the simplification and assumption. I say all the mass is concentrated at this point and the length of the rope will not change during the motion. You see, this one will, will, will be oscillating this way, this way, that. Right? Okay, so everybody have seen that, but you may probably have seen some clock like that. Okay. However, if you want to describe this motion accurately or by a mathematical manner, then we may probably need to find out uh, a relationship. That relationship we can use Newton's second law. Newton's second law is F equal to MA. Okay, we, we all know that. And graphically, we can de describe Newton's second law in this manner. Okay, so by Newton's second law, and we're saying that, uh, well, well, this is, I don't want to bother you by the dynamic. Anyway, we can set up an equation, we call it the equation of motion or governing equation. Theta, uh, theta is the angle, we call it uh, angular displacement. And it divides by G, G is, G is the constant of the gravitation, the gravitational acceleration and L again is the length sine theta, uh, theta is this angle. But this theta with the two dots on top indicating the second derivative, or we can say the acceleration love of the motion. Okay, so this is an equation that we can use to find the solution which will be used for describing the displacement of uh, the oscillation or the solution of this governing equation. But in this case, for this equation, we call it nonlinear equation because sine theta, well, that will be the sine, 
sinusoidal curve there, right? If we have a sine theta there uh, as a function. So it's not linear. So that bring this governing equation nonlinear. And the nonlinear, what nonlinear govern, governing equation like this is very difficult to solve, if not impossible. Okay, so what people would do? They would say, okay, well, this is not linear. Well, I don't like it. Let's make it a linear. The make it linear, that process is called linearization. Okay, then sine theta, we say, wow, well, when theta is very small, then we can approximately uh, assume that uh, sine theta equal to theta. Okay, and a lot of people accepted that, although that's a number approximation. Okay, so then what do we do? Let's change the sine theta to theta by assuming that theta is very small. So then we have this one is a linear equation. And a linear equation, we can find the solution, we can find the period of motion, but this is a periodic motion, right? Okay, everything is beautiful, nice. Okay, Let, let's ask a question. Why you want to change the nonlinear system to linear system? Uh, the reason is that nonlinear system is difficult to solve. And then next question would be, you said, okay, sine theta, when theta equal to a small value, then we can say sine theta equal to theta or upper cosmeter equal to theta. So my question would be, how small that theta is, then we can call it the small. Is five degrees small? Is six degrees small? Is 10 degrees small? So that is not certain. In other words, and with, the, with the, another question would it be, well, what if the angle is not a small? Then the, the answer is, then if it is, it's too large, if the angle is too large, then we don't know how to solve it completely. Okay, so that is the difficult part. So at this stage, we do not, believe it or not, uh, we do not have a very good mathematical way to analytically or completely solving those kind of nonlinear systems. Okay, so that's so then uh, the people were saying, "Wow, what's the what's the what's the difference? Why is linear and nonlinear? Would that uh, give us the different response?" If we have a nonlinear system there, or we have a very large angle, the theta there, yes. So the response of a linear system, typical linear system is a periodic, okay? Something like that, periodic. So we can have a solution like what we had, what we had previously, you can see that. That's a periodic solution. And in other words, once you give me a value t, I can find the theta, corresponding theta for you. So that implies that we know the, the response of the system completely. And I can predict what will happen next second, next hour, next day, or next year, right? and everything is predictable. However, if we have a nonlinear system, a nonlinear response can be something like this. That is what we call chaos, chaotic response, okay? It's not, not very periodic, okay? It's in, in strictly speaking, it's not periodic at all. So that is what we call the periodic, uh, a chaotic, uh, response or chaotic phenomena. Actually, cha chaotic phenomena has been around us almost everywhere. Let's say, uh, for example, hurricane, we can say the forecasting uh, by saying that, oh, we expected the, current, uh, the hurricane will go this direction along this path in the next four hours. That is uh, not an accurate prediction. And for longer time, let's say next day, for example, we can hardly predict it because that's nonlinearities involved in it. 
the system, the weather system is nonlinear. So therefore, what we need to find uh, how we, we define those uh, so-called nonlinear uh, phenomena, what are the characteristics of a nonlinear phenomenon, especially chaos or chaotic response? So there are a few conclusions that I can give you by far the people know that. The first thing is that nonlinear system is hard to predict, okay? And that, that's what I have said, okay? And because we do not have analytical solution, we cannot solve the nonlinear systems completely or analytically. That's the difficult part. And therefore we are not completely uh, uh, we're not understand uh, understand or comprehend the phenomena or or the mechanism of the nonlinear system. Unfortunately, okay. Second thing that I can say, well, with, well, that's a conclusion that we, what everybody agreed in the field, that's the sensitivity of uh, nonlinear system to inertia conditions. So that means a slight change of inertia condition will completely change the response of the system. That kind of uh, uh, characteristic is, is known now as the butterfly effect. And the butterfly effect, that, that, well, that, that's just the people, people uh, saying in that way, the flood of the butterfly's wings in Brazil set off a tornado in Texas. Okay, that's... Well, the butterfly effect now is widely used everywhere, and especially those politicians like to use it. But one thing that we should understand is butterfly effect is a characteristic that's existing in non-inner systems. And it's actually saying that slight change in the energy condition may probably end a big change of the response of the system. One thing that I want to emphasize here is it doesn't mean that the slight change in the energy condition will generate a huge, huge energy. The final energy will be changed. No, energy will be the same. Okay, energy cannot be created and or destroyed. Okay, for a given system. So then that's the chaotic system and the uh, chaotic system and to give us those conclusions that are not predictable and very sensitive to initial conditions. And there are some other phenomena that we may probably discuss later, or you can find it from uh, the corresponding uh, publications. So what I would like to do is to how we solve those nonlinear systems, although we can hardly solve them analytically, can we solve them semi-analytically? Or can we solve them numerically with the higher accuracy? That's that's uh, the part of uh, my research. Uh, let's say what I do, I would use the piecewise uh, constant argument and make the system as a piecewise linear. Uh, can we make it a piecewise linear system and we solve those system in a very small uh, time interval. And then we combine them together. If that's so, uh, hopefully we can get a higher uh, the solution with a higher accuracy. Okay, let's say, what do we do? Let's say this is a typical governing equation, well, the, the second order difference equation and the rep representing the motion, uh, oscillation, vibration, love a system. We can do that. Okay. And in some case, we can say, well, this is a piecewise constant argument involved in. Or simply we say, well, we have a system, we have an external excitation piecewise, piecewisely changing. Okay. So that if we can do that, then we may solve this system in the time interval. Okay, you can say, well, there, there's a hammer hitting the uh, pendulum. Oh, that's probably easy to imagine. Okay, although it's not exactly the same. And then we can say, okay, well, I know the solution for this. 
if that's a piece by its constant system, a piece of its constant argument, and uh, interpreted as a piecewise uh, uh, constant excitation applying on the system. So then we can solve this uh, equation in this tiny uh, time interval, okay? And then I have, if I have the initial condition, let's say initial displacement and the initial velocity there. If that so, then well, I can find the solution completely for the system, for this system, and over the time uh, horizon that we are expecting. Okay, doesn't matter how large that time horizon is. So then we can solve it. That's uh, that's an idea. Okay. So now, if we have a nonlinear system, then I thought about it and see how, how can we combine it or use a bridge to bridge up those two systems. One is a piece by a linear system, another one is continuous system. Continuous system is mostly existing, widely existing in our world, right? So what I thought was, uh, okay, why don't we have this kind of uh, uh, mathematical description um, by saying that NT, this what the, the square bracket representing a the greatest an integer function. Well, I don't want to bother you about that terminology. You just say that change it to be an integer, okay? Uh, that's an integer over another an integer, although this n may not necessarily be an integer, well, let's assume it's an, an integer. And then t is time. If we have this, then we can, uh, we can prove this is true. With n approach to infinity, and that this relationship is true. So remember, this is an integer, a piecewise constant. Let's say one, two, three, four, those kind of integers. And uh, then when n approaches to infinity, then we have this relationship. Oh, bingo, this is a good relationship. And then actually we may use this relationship to bridge up the piecewise linear system and the continuous system. Wow, that's something that we can take the advantage of. So this one has been proved mathematically and in one of my books. Okay, now let's say I have a nonlinear dynamic system. And uh, as I said, this is an equa typical equation describing vibration or oscillation of uh, a system. Let's say we have G, this function is a nonlinear part of this equation. And uh, well, let's not bother this for, uh, for this time, at this time. And we just describe how we solve this, this uh, uh, equation, nonlinear governing equation. By let's say, well, I, again, in the tiny time interval, I may somehow change the system into this system and get everything in terms of uh, time t, well, let's say. That's uh, what we could do. And uh, the purpose of uh, doing this is in the tiny, uh, tiny time interval, we change this nonlinear system into a linear system. Then we may probably can solve this linear system completely inside of the time interval. Uh, that's the idea. And then indeed we can we can find the solution in this uh, manner. And uh, well, this is a little bit complicated in mathematic format, but it's not that difficult. Trust me. Okay. And then this G uh, can be a can be a square matrix. And I can by or or a uh, a a matrix which is not necessarily symmetric. Well, that's not worth bother about it. And we can find the solution anyway. We can find a solution in this format. So in other words, the nonlinear system can be solved by this approach 
with the piecewise linear system that we, we managed to write in that form. And uh, here, let's say R is uh, an integer and the G is a matrix, actually a matrix to the power of something there, right? And when N tended to be infinity, that power over tended to be infinity. So although this solution is given in this format, it is hard to do the operation. What do we mean by operation? You can't hardly do integration. You can hardly do differentiation. Those kind of uh, uh, the operation uh, commonly seen in calculus, which are very useful. Anyway, what solutions is there? And we can say that the solution, although it's not a complete analytical solution, we can call it semi-analytical solution. But we can solve it. Here in, in some case, let's say, if I do not know the solution of a linear system, hey, this is a linear system, linear system. And uh, while well, in many cases, we can solve it completely. See, with this linear system, by using the piecewise linear approach that I just described, can we solve this linear system completely or analytically? Ah, let's have a look. Uh, so in, well, in the tiny time interval that we said, and then we can change it in this, this form and this T change it to be a constant, constant, this is constant. I is a constant and this an integer, right? Then we can solve it uh, in this form. Again, there's a matrix to the power of nt. As I said, n can be infinity. That means we have an infinite number of matrix multiplied that will be very complex and time consuming, right? If we can find the solution. So we got to do something there. Let's say, uh, uh, assume this, uh, uh, this is a symmetric matrix, right? Symmetric uh, square matrix Q, what, what, we, re we write it in that form. And then we find out the eigenvalues of this Q. Do not worry about this. What well, eigenvalue is a character, describe the characteristic of the system. Anyway, with the some mathematical uh, change, we can, we can find it in this format. Okay, Q can be written as E, D, E minus one. Actually, this D is a, a matrix with the eigenvalues, eigenvalues in the diagonal line. Okay, and then what is E? E is corresponding to the eigenvalue. This is the eigenvector. And the E to the power of negative one is the inverse left for the eigenvector. And those are just mathematic uh, uh, change. And then we can easily do that if you are familiar with, with the matrix. And if that's so, this, this, uh, this uh, trouble making NT, the power can be moved to inside. Hey, as you can see that. So then we do not worry about the infinite number of uh, matrix multiplied together. So we, well, that's, that's the beauty of this kind of operation. And then uh, I found that there, there are something interesting. And if you are interested in this, and uh, you may probably find that this is interesting too, because this is nothing. And we can rewrite it into so-called Euler's equation. Uh, that's the, the most beautiful equation that people are saying uh, in the world. Uh, I don't know why it ends up with this kind of uh, uh, description, mathematical description. However, what well, it's describing the oscillatory, the, the uh, oscillation, oscillation and the vibration of the system. And what well, we needed to further uh, saying the physical background of this, this kind of uh, description. Anyway, when n approaches to infinity, we have a lot of interesting results generated. And yeah, so then let's 
get back to our original problem. We solve the linear, uh, linear system completely and analytically. Yes, when, when, when we let n approach it to infinity, we can prove that the piecewise linear system tend to be the continuous system, the solution. Uh, that's, that's what we were expecting. And that, that means uh, we can use the piecewise linear approach to find some of the linear uh, solutions for linear systems through the approach that we just described. And this is, this is a completely new approach. We can find the same solution, which is good. That made me think, well, why don't we use this method to solve nonlinear system analytically and completely? Unfortunately, I, I, I am not successful yet. And uh, I'll have a team of students working on that. And uh, we're still trying very hard, uh, striving to get a solution. We're working on it. Okay. However, although the analytical solution is very difficult to find, but numerical solution can be can be can be found without too much of the difficulties because we have so many of the numerical method to solve for those uh, uh, non solve for those nonlinear systems. One of them which is uh, probably the most popular numeric method is so-called Renji Kata method. And that's, that's, a, that's an extension of the Taylor series. Very popular. And you, well, if you are familiar with Mala, MATLAB and you MATLAB, you can, you can find the Renji Kata method. Okay. However, if we use the approach, the piece by the linear approach that we discussed previously, and the combining with the Taylor series, we may probably get a better solution. So how we do that? Let's say, let's say a simple nonlinear dynamic system like that. And we have uh, on the right hand side, we have a function t or function of something very strange, not linear anyway. Okay, not linear. And then by using the bridge that we just descri described previously, and we can find the solution that we need. The idea would be the same as what we have described and saying inside of the tiny time interval we may find a linear system and we solve that linear system and then combining all those systems together, then we find the solution. Okay, indeed. And for numerical, solu uh, numerical solution, we always need to find the recurrence relationship and in the time interval. And we know on the, on the left hand side, we, we have a value given and then put it, them into, into it, and we can find the solution for next point, right in the, in the time interval. If that's so, so this, and we can find the solutions for linear and nonlinear systems. As I said, many of the non linear systems that we can find the complete solution. Let's say, uh, well, this is an example, and I have seen, a linear system, or well, I found a solution for linear system by using the approach that I just uh, described. And we call it PT method. That's, that's, our, that's our method, PT method. P stands for piece of linear and T stands for Taylor's extension. Okay, let's say, well, this one, the, the PT solution gives you everything is the same. And except that this part is a square minus b over two minus two c square. And exact solution would be a square minus b minus two c square. Everything's the same except that this one's very small. And also p minus nt over t and over nt over n is a value smaller than one. Let's say 0 0.1. And to the power of four, 0 0.001. 
Okay, that's a very small. So in other words, the PT method give you a solution or dough that's approximate or what once again. And the numeric solution is approximate solution. It's not analytical, uh, not a complete solution. So the accuracy of the PT, the solution of the PT method is very high. Okay, let's see how high it is. As I said, Renji Kata method is one of the, if not the day, most popular method, numeric method. And we compare PT method with the Renji Kata method and see the error. Okay, the error. This guy, the purple square represented the error of PT method. And for the system, and this uh, yellow triangle representing the error of Renji Kata method. But errors are very small. You can see 0 0.0008, 0 0.008, very small. However, in comparing with the two, er two, the two errors and they generate by two systems, and PT method gives you a much higher accuracy method as a solution solution to, with the higher accuracy in comparing with the Renji Kata method, which is the most popular one. Okay, which is good. We were, we were excited about it. And however, that's a linear system though. And then you know the solution. What if we don't know the solution for nonlinear system? Uh, let's have a look. Say we, we, we use the PT method, we use the bridge, uh, everything the same. And for the nonlinear system like that, and by using the Renji Kata method, we do the comparison. Comparison would be a little bit difficult if you don't know the solution. Uh, but we can say when we have uh, the time interval selected for numerical solution, very small, and the, the, the accuracy of the solution would be higher. That's commonly accepted. Okay, so, but if you have a smaller time interval for calculation, then your calculation time would be longer, right? That's the cost. So let's do the comparison. See, this one, the purple one, the line uh, seems continuous, and the last line is calculated by Renji Kata method with a very small time interval, which is 0 0.003. And uh, this yellow triangle is the numerical solution of Renji Kata method with a much larger time interval, which is the 0.3. That's a th hundred times larger. So as you can see, well, those, those the, the two solutions are totally different. First thing is that Renji Kata method gives you this great solution. They're not continuous. Okay. Secondly, and uh, when we increase the uh, accuracy, what well, well, the requirement of accuracy, then you, you need it to have a smaller time interval. However, if we use the PT method, uh, there's another line there. Okay. They're overlapped with this purple. And this, the solution of a PT method is about the same as the solution of the smaller time interval of Renji Kata method. Uh, but for PT method, we use very large time interval, 0 0.3. In that implies we use much less time of a calculation. And uh, we got almost the same solution as that of a Renji Kata method of a hundred smaller, hundred times a smaller time interval. Can you understand that? Okay, so that means the PT method, the solution for PT methods is very accurate and reliable. Okay, although it requires a less calculation time. Okay, and reliability of the PT method is very important because if you, you use the Renji Kata method, you may probably not get the right solution in some case, but PT method may probably avoid that kind of uh, 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 disadvantage. So PT method and the Renji Kata method in comparing with that, obviously PT method 
is much better. Okay, so that's uh, that's part of our research, and uh, we we are uh, excited about the results, and which are pretty pretty good, and a lot of people are using it. And uh, we, but as I said, there are still a lot of work need to do, and we are not really uh, we do not really fully understand the phenomenon of a nonlinear system, why chaos happened. We know chaos, chaos happened, but, but why it happened? What is the mechanism of nonlinear system? And what is the, uh, the cause of, uh, of uh, the uh, chaos? And in that, in what kind of situation that, that uh, the chaos may happen, we are in lack of an accurate and reliable uh, analytical solution there. So, but people are working on it. We are working on it. It's a very interesting area. Actually, as we have discussed previously, our world is not linear. So we have to find some way to solve for those nonlinear systems. Okay. So that's some of the, our papers published. If you are interested in, you can find this, those uh, papers online. And you can find the, the, the titles of the papers from my uh, website. You know, there, there are many of them. And this book describes all what I have discussed uh, today. And you can find out uh, the book, the physical book, in our library. And fortunately, our library purchased the electronic version of this, this uh, textbook. And uh, you can you can download the probably two or chap two or three chapters each student. You are allowed to to download if you want to download what I have said today the contents, and then you can you can download chapter four and chapter five of this book. And if you are really interested in this uh, nonlinear uh, system, the solution of nonlinear systems. An application of the, those concepts, you can find another book of mine, and we have the applications in it. And well, hopefully that uh, you will like it. And the research is obviously plays uh, a, a great and important uh, role in, uh, in, at, uh, at our university and at in all the universities. And if you are interested in this, uh, in this topic, and uh, or you would like to do research uh, along this line, please contact me. Okay, that's all for what I need to say. And please enjoy the study and the research at the University of Regina. That's all for today. Thank you very much. And. Let's stop here. See you.